by God's laws that we must keep? Okay, let's get. Um, First Corinthians. This is a law that must be kept, okay, in the Bible. First Corinthians chapter 11, okay? This is for the men and the women, okay? First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Read. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Okay, so we have to be followers of Christ. We have to follow what Christ is saying. Read. Jump down to verse 3. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying dishonor with his head. Do you understand that, brother? It says every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor with his head. So what did you understand by that? You wanted to read it again? Okay, read that again. Um, verse 3, chapter 11, verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. Who's our head? Who's the men's head? Jesus. Christ is the head. Christ is the men's head, okay? Let's read up a bit so we get that clarification. Read from verse 3. Let's go from chapter 11, verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. This is talking about the order, the structure. Okay? Read that again. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. Okay? That's the order. So Christ is our head. Hey, you said, what does that mean? What does that mean, the head? The head means leader. So Christ is the leader of the man. The Israelite man, the God on the earth, is Christ. Christ is the head of that man. You understand? He reads. But, but I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the leader of every man, every Israelite man is Jesus the Christ. Okay? That's your leader. That's who you answer to. That's your master. That's the master teacher, Christ, right? So let's see about Christ. Keep reading. And the head of the woman is the man. Now, the leader, the commander-in-chief of the woman is who? The man. You understand that? The leader. So guess what? When your woman's bucking up against you, guess what? She's out of damn order. That's right. You understand that? She's out of order. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, send that back to your wife. She's out of order. We go, we go. And the head of Christ is God. What? And the head of Christ is God. So now the leader, the commander in chief of the Most High God is Jesus the Christ. So there's an order. God, Christ, man, woman. Okay? Let's keep reading. Verse 4. Every man. Every man. Praying or prophesying. Right now you're in, you are in the spirit of prophecy. Okay? Because that's what we're doing. You're listening to the prophecies coming out of the Bible. So the scripture says, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Now you've got your physical head covered, right? Your head is covered with a hat. So the scripture says, every man praying or prophesying like you are, with your head covered, dishonoreth his head. Does what? Dishonoreth his head. So right now, it says you dishonor Christ because you got your head covered while the scriptures are coming out. So what do you think you should do? Now that it's covered, your head is covered, now what should you do? Now what should you do? Yes. So what should you do? Let's keep reading verse 6. Go to verse 6. Listen to this. Let's see why a man should not cover his head. Read. When the scriptures are coming out. Let's prove in chapter 11 verse 6. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be sure. Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. What did the scripture say? For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Why? For as much as he is the image and the glory of God. What is the man? He is the image and glory of God. What is the man? He is the image and glory of God. The Bible says you are the image of God, man. You shouldn't have your head, but you should let whatever's under that hat show. That's what God said. He said, you're in the image of him. 
You are God on earth after the Most High God. So what should you do? You should not come. You agree? So what are you going to do? Are you going to apply it? Why not? And this is why we remain at the bottom. Right there. Go to, hold that. Ezekiel 7 and Ezekiel 23. I want you to hear something, brother. Because one problem, you ever read the Bible, brother? One problem we always have is we are rebellious as hell. And we love this captivity. We act like we, we act like we don't love it, but we love it. Or else we would change. You agree, brother? We would change. Right? That's what we would do. Say, say it on the mic. Say it on the mic. We don't know how to change. We don't know how to change. Okay, very good. But now we just gave you a law. That's how you change. That's called repentance, brother. That's all, that's all repentance is, changing your ways. Because guess what? In, Brit in Britain here, you're at the bottom. Your nation is at the bottom. You don't own these stores. You don't own these buildings. You don't own nothing here. You can't save people from a burning tower. You can't even go in the tower. Right? But you love it so. You love Y'all love the oppression. We gave you an easy one. Remove your hat when the scriptures is coming out. That's all the Bible's saying. You don't want to do it. That's rebellion, brother. Read. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, I ascend thee to the children of Israel. To whom? To the children of Israel. Brother, right here. You know you're an Israelite? You know you're God's chosen people? You know that? You right here, right here. Orange shirt. You know that? You know that, sis? We're God's chosen people. That's what we're here to tell you. We're God's chosen people. But there's a problem, sis. We're at the bottom. With every other nation sitting on top of us, telling us what to do, passing policies and laws against us. You understand that? Read. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel. Now we're going to see the spirit of the Israelites. We're going to see the spirit of you blacks and Hispanics here. Go ahead. To a rebellious nation. Ah, oh, that's you right there, brother. That's your spirit right there. You got a rebellious spirit. You understand? You just got to read what the Bible says and apply it. It's simple, right? So let's go back to the scripture. Let's see if you can apply this. Read it again. That's the Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So you agree with that? Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. You agree with that too, huh? Oh, you like that one, huh? The head of the, the, head of the, the woman is the man. I'll tell her what to do, huh? Go ahead. And the head of Christ. By the way, it's talking about a righteous man. Not a Negro or a nigga. It's talking about a righteous man. A righteous man is not going to abuse his woman. Okay? Go ahead. And the head of Christ. The and head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So the scripture says, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors Christ. You agree? So do you agree right now you're dishonoring Christ? Do you agree right now you're dishonoring Christ? Ah, the brother said, I don't want to agree with that. He don't like that part of the Bible, huh? You don't like that part, huh? Okay. It's only if, um, every man praying or prophesying having his head covered is only if his head. But every woman praying or prophesying with her head uncovered. Now, every woman praying or prophesying or listening to the scriptures, that same thing as prophesying with her head uncovered. This only if her head. She dishonors her head. So, sis, next time we see you and you or you you praying or prophesying, what should you have? Your head covered, right? Right? Like, look, look, look at the sister behind you. Your head is supposed to be covered like my sister right here. That's having your head covered, okay? Let's go to the bit. Go to Leviticus. So what we're here to show you? God's laws. We're here to show you repentance. We're here to show you you're at the bottom. How are we going to get off the bottom? What's the solution? Who knows? Anybody, anybody got, any of y'all blacks and Hispanics got a solution out here on how to get out of this situation we're in? Because we're in a situation here. Okay, we're at the bottom. What you, what we gonna do? Nobody give a damn. Nobody care, huh? But guess what? The Israelites care. Read. That's right. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5. 
They shall not make boldness upon their head. So the scripture says, don't make bold, don't shave your head off bald. Go ahead. Neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard. The scripture says, don't shave off your beard. Don't shave your beard off. Question for you, brother. In slavery, was the slave given a beard? Was he allowed to have a beard? No? You agree, brother? So what was the slave ma what did the slave master call the slave? What do you call him? Begins with a B. I'll give you a big clue. Next letter, O. What do you call him? What do you call your fathers? What do you call him? He called you boy. That's what he called you. He called you boy. You wasn't allowed to be a man in slavery. You understand that? He made you shave off your beard. You wasn't allowed to have a beard. But now you freely do it after the British man. Why you do that? Because you conform to their ways. You got to conform back to what, the, what God said to do. You understand that, brother? So those are two quick, those, those are two easy sins that you're in. Wait, one second, sis. Let me ask you a question, sis. You're from the nose down right here, right? To your chin right here. What's the difference between your face and his face? Any difference? You see a difference? No. You understand that, brother? Right now, you, you, you're in a state of, that's, that's feminine. We're not feminine, we're warriors. We're lions, bro. That's right. You understand that? So what, what should you have next time we see you? What should you start to grow on your face that God gave you? I can't hear you. You, you should do what? You should leave your beard alone. You could trim it and make it look nice, but you should have a beard. You too, bro. I bet you could grow a mighty beard. You understand that? You grow a mighty bit. You're a warrior. We warriors out here. We ain't no little damn boy. You're supposed to be warriors out here. Uh. I can't hear you. Why do we trim on him? We're allowed to trim on him. We can't shave it. Boy, read it again. Listen close. Listen close. The big he shot to 21 verse 5. They shall not make boldness upon their head. So I'm not allowed to make boldness. You know like Mike, you know Michael Jordan? Remember Michael Jordan? He used to shave off his, he still shaves his head off bald. We're not allowed to shave it bald. Says who? Where, show it to me, where is it? Where is it, sis? Where is it, sis? Show it to me, watch your back, sis. Watch it. Come, come this way, sis. Come this way. Come this way, sis. I can't hear you. Come this way. Uh-huh. That's number six. That's a Nazarite vow, sister. That's got nothing to do with us today. You can't be a Nazarite today. Your whole food is defiled. The wine is defiled, and so is the food. You ain't no damn Nazarite. That's where she's going, Nazarite vow. That's about, about long here. Read it again. They shall not make boldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. You understand that, bro? You understand the big man? So what should you have next time we, we come out here? What should you start to grow on your face? Where should you start to grow, bro? Because guess what? Right now, you have an English culture. You agree? You celebrate Christmas? Yeah, you do, eh? Where we learn that from? Is that our custom? Is that our culture? Is Christmas your culture, brother? No. Yes, no? What about you, big man? Is Christmas your culture? But what do our people here in Britain do? We do culture after Great Britain. So where the hell is our culture? Where is it at? Who knows uh, their real culture? You know your culture? Do you know your culture? Do you know your culture? Still learning. Very good. We just gave you some culture. God's laws. That's, that's right. your damn culture, man. Because that's your way of life. Your way of life ain't no damn Easter. Or no, no, uh, uh, what else they got out here? Uh, for, the, for the Christmas and all that garbage they got. That ain't your culture. But that's what you allow your kids to do. That's what your fathers and mothers allow you to do. That got nothing to do with you, but that keeps you in sin. You understand? That keeps you in sin. Judah, give me Judah. Judah 5 and 20. Because guess what? The nations know about you. They know, guess what? When you wake the hell up, their time is over. You understand? Our kingdom is next. That's why we are here. We want to rule the damn planet Earth. That's right. But y'all want to rule. Y'all want to stay at the bottom, man. Y'all want to remain Negroes, niggas, dressing like hoes and harlots. That's what we do. Why? You love the damn oppression, man. It's time to wake the hell up. Do the 5 and 20. Do this chapter 5 verse 20. I'm going to let you hear what the other nations know about you that you don't know about yourself. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor. This is a conversation between two heathens. Read. 
if there be any evil in these people. Now, the, now the heathen is saying to the other one, if there be any sin in these people, in the Israelites, and they sin against their God, and we commit the sin against our God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. That what? That this shall be their ruin. Are we a ruined people today? What do you think, bro? Are we a ruined, spoiled people today? What do you think? We kill each other. We get every woman we see, we want to sleep with every damn woman on the block, right? We sell drugs to each other. We hate each other. Because we're a spoiled, ruined people today. Good. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. And what? And we shall overcome them. And what? And we shall overcome them. And the other nations have now overcome us. Now we're so comfy in Babylon. We're comfy here. We comfy working at Virgin Media. We comfy working at the Super Drug Store. We comfy working at Marks and Spencer. But we don't own those places. We don't own nothing there. You understand? We don't own nothing. Now we gotta go back for damn job. We gotta go dress up suit and tie, look good, tell half our damn life story to somebody to so they hire us. So we can earn a damn living. To hell with that. That's not living. That's just surviving. That's all y'all doing here, surviving. Read it again. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error in these people, and they sin against their God, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. Let us consider. That's going to be the downfall of our people if we remain in sin. You understand that, brother? If we remain in sin, that's the downfall of our people. That's why we're at the bottom today. That's why we, that's why we kill each other. That's why we hate each other. You agree? But you want to remain in sin, brother. You want to remain in sin. But it's deeper than just you. What about your nation? You understand that, brother? What about our nation? Read. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. Read. But if there be no iniquity... Now, if we do not commit the sin against our God... In their nation, uh -huh. let my Lord now pass by. Do what? Let my Lord now pass by. Now, you better leave these people alone. Because they're going to kill you. They're going to make mockery of you. Because you can't overcome them. If we stop committing the sin. You want to say that? How do we stop committing sin? What's the first step to stopping the sin? Any idea, brother? It, it, it starts with an R. It starts with an R. You know, brother? It starts with an R, the letter R. Repent. That's the first thing you got to do, is repent and change the way you do your thing. You understand? You can't do your thing no more. Because your thing has you at the bottom. You got to do what God said to do now. You can't do what you want to do. You belong to the most high God, man. You don't belong to you. Give me 1 Kings 8. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 47. You understand that? So look at the sign right here, bro. Look at the sign right here. Y'all look at the sign. Where do you see yourself on that sign right there? Are you Caribbean so far? Haitian or something? Huh? You're West Indian. You're from the tribe of Benjamin. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. Where are you? I say it again. Say it again. See that? He said the most oppressed nation that came from Africa was in the West Indies. But guess what we're here to tell you, brother? You're not African. You're an Israelite according to the Bible. That's it. On the west coast of Africa for a time. That's it. You ain't no damn African. You're God's chosen people. You understand? The slave trade proves we're God's chosen people, man. Because that was probably, you know that's prophesied in the Bible to be going on slavery on slave ships? You know that, bro? That's what You want me to read it to you, bro? Let's read it. Get it. Deuteronomy 28. That's all. All your history is in the scriptures. And guess what? It didn't happen to Africans. It happened to your fathers and mothers. So you ain't no Africans. The Africans, the real Africans sold you. That's what they did. They sold you along with the Arabs. Really? Are they black too? Huh? Absolutely they're black. Just like the East Indians are black too. The difference is God chose one and he didn't choose the other. That's right. That's the difference. The difference is you're chosen. That's the difference. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Stop. The scripture says God is going to bring you back into Egypt. 
What was our status in Egypt? You ever heard of the Ten Commandments Command stories? Remember that on TV? What was the Israelite status in Egypt? What were they doing? Were they just chilling? Were they just chilling with Pharaoh? What were they doing? Come closer, brother. Come closer. We don't fight, bro. We're here to talk to y'all. One second. One second. One second. Come closer. Big man. Come closer. Say, say it again. No, we were, they were slaves. Remember, they were building pyramids and, and murder brick and all of that. They were slaves in Egypt. So now God said, I'm going to bring you back into slavery. You understand that? So take out Egypt and put slavery in there. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into slavery. God is going to bring you into slavery again. A second time. You're going back into slavery a second time. Let's see how the Israelites are going to go back into slavery. With shit. With what? With shit. With what? With shit. I'll ask you. You're smart. You look like a smart brother. What people on the planet Earth went into slavery on shit? Deuteronomy 101. Hold that. Which black people? Was it Africans? Ah, uh, did your forefathers go into slavery on slave ships? Did your forefathers go into slavery on slave ships, big man? Did, what about you? You agree? So guess what the scripture's telling you? You ain't no African, you're an Israelite according to the Bible. That's right! You guys chosen people. We just proved it. You went into slavery on ships. That happened to our fathers and mothers for breaking God's laws. Read it. You see one of me, chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. To who? All Israel. Africans? All Israel. What about British? All Israel. Jamaicans and Caribbeans and West Indians? All Israel. See that? God called us the Israelites. He called us his people, man. God's chosen people. He ain't call you these labels black, African, all that garbage. That's garbage. That's from your oppressors. You understand that? Those are all slave names. Black. You understand that? The Chinese man, where, he, where, where's, his, where's the Chinese man's name? Oh, see how simple that is? Where, where, what about the Irish man? Where's his name? Ireland, okay. What about the Saudi Arabian man? Where's his name? It's called Saudi Arabia. You see the problem? Where's the black man's name? Oh, thank you. See the problem, right? There's a problem here. We don't know who the hell we are. You understand? If we knew who we, who we were, we would stop killing each other. We would treat each other with respect. You understand? We wouldn't whore out each other's women. We wouldn't be busting guns at each other, trying to stab each other, steal from each other. But those are the things we do. Why? Because we don't know who the hell we are. We see another black man, we see another nigga. Oh, I wouldn't rob him. Maybe I can, t maybe I can take his woman. That's, what, that's how we think. But we see other nations, oh, how you, how's, your, how's your day, sir? Are you okay? Can I do anything for you? That's how we do. That's a slave damn mentality. You look at your brother as, as, as crap, but you look at the other nations as, oh, he's, he's good in society, he's good. No, man, your brother was royalty just like your royalty. You understand? Psalms 82 and 6. Oh, you got a question? You got a question, sister? Come up. Come ask your question, sir. Ask your question. Why were they white? Good question. The sister says, why did this happen to us, correct? Why did this happen to us, sis? Right? Yes. Why did this happen to us? Why? That's a good question. I always had that question. I'm sure some of y'all got that question too. Why did God let this happen to us? Deuteronomy 28, 15. Good question, sister. Very good question. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. It but it shall come to pass. It's going to, future prophecy is going to come to pass. If thou will not hearken. If thou will not listen, okay. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you don't listen to what this Bible says, that's the word of, of, the word of God right here. It's this Bible. If you don't apply and do what it says to do. To observe, to do all his commandments. To observe, to do all his commandments. And his statutes. Which I command you this day that all these curses, all, all these what? All these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Wait a minute. It says, if you don't do what God says to do, I'm going to send these curses over, over you and they're going to overtake you. 
So wait a minute, let's read some of the curses and simple process of elimination. Let's see who he's talking about. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Wait a minute, who the hell that happened to? Who that happened to, sis? Whose sons and daughters was given unto another people? Thank you. Did that happen to the Jewish man? Wait a minute. But the Jewish man said this is his book. He said he's the Jew. When the Bible says no, that history don't fit him. It fits you in the ghettos of, of, of England today. It fits y'all in the council houses over there. You understand that? We keep reading. There's more. There's more. And then I shall look and fare with longing for them all the day long. So wait a minute. In slavery time, if you're, if you're, this is your father here in slavery. If you, if your master wanted to sell you to another plantation, can he stop, can he stop the master? Read it again, Bible prophecy. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and then I shall look and fare with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. See that, that's Bible prophecy fulfilled in the transatlantic slave trade. When we got, when we got to different islands, different land masses, we couldn't stop the slave master from sending our kids. We couldn't stop them. That's Bible history, man. That's your history. That's your history. That's our history, sister. Read on. No, give me verse 37. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. Today we're an astonishment. Go ahead. A proverb and a byword. Who knows what a proverb or a byword is? Who, anybody knows? It's being called outside of your God-given name. That's what a byword is. Being called outside of your God-given name. God called you the Israelites. You call yourself black, or uh, English, or British, or Jamaican. God never called you them damn names. Who knows what the word Jamaica mean? Anybody know? You know, sirs, what does the word Jamaica mean? Yes, the word. Who's Jamaican here? Who's so-called Jamaican here? What does the word Jamaican, see that? We know Jeremiah 17, hold that, Jeremiah 17 and, and, and 4. Huh? The word Jamaican, you, you Jamaican? Huh? St. Lucia, okay. You Jamaican? What does the word Jamaican mean, sister? Okay, the word Jamaican, and when I, when I say it, you're gonna be like, oh damn, I knew it. The word Jamaican means land of wood and water. That's what it means. But guess what? It's a byword. God never called you that. God called you greater than a Jamaican. And guess what? The people in Jamaica right now, do they own the water or do they own the land? Thank you. They don't own nothing there, but they call it land of water and water. You see the problem here? Read on. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemy. Who we serve Thine enemy. No, we're serving a great British man. Thine enemy. What about the American man? Thine enemy. What about the Arab man we work for here? Thine enemy. That's what God said. God said these people are your enemies. The people you work for are your enemies. That's what the Bible just said. Go back to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Read. No, give me 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Now, Let's compare what we just read to the Jewish man. Did that happen to the Jewish man? Did that happen to the Jewish man? Or does, he, does he have nuclear weapons in Israel now? Does he have his own economy? Does he have his own land? Does he have his own military? Where the hell is yours? See the problem? Where's yours? You ain't got none. Why? Because you keep breaking God's law. That's why we ain't got nothing here. Read. It's 28 verse 48. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemy. There that will go again. Serving your enemies. The sister right there, she's serving her enemy now. She even, she like she even married to the enemy. So that's what our sisters and brothers do. You go intermingle with the people that had your fathers enslaved. Right. That's what we do. No, you got to repent for that. That's what we got to do. We all got to repent. We all got to change our mindset. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against Israel. thee. Who sent this man against us? The Lord shall send against thee. Who sent the nations against us? The Lord shall send against thee. You didn't know that was in the Bible, did you? You didn't know that was in the Bible, huh? The Lord sent these nations against us. You know why? Because we disobeyed him. He gave us the whole damn planet earth to rule. 
and the people on the planet to rule. And what do we say? Nah, we want to be like them. We don't want to be above them, God. We want to be like them. We want to serve their God. We want to know how, how, how the white, how uh, Esau serves his white Jesus. We want to know about white Jesus. We want to know about Allah. How, the, how does the Saudi Arabian man serve Allah, the Muslim? How do they do that thing? We want to know about their gods instead of serving our one true God of this Bible. That's why we remain at the bottom today. Read on. In hunger. So for food, who do we go to for food? Anybody know? Where do we get our food from? Big men. Where do we get our food from? If you want to eat, where do we go? Do, do, do our people produce any food here? Huh? We don't produce no food here. Are you, for real? Are you serious? Nobody? So you go to your enemies to eat. You understand that? Huh? The other nation. That's what God said. Not just him. The other nations. Not just him. He's one of them, yes. And in fact, wait a minute. Who pay a water bill here? Do y'all, do, y'all, do y'all got rainwater free from the sky? Ain't there ain't water everywhere? But now you got to pay for water. Now they bottle the water and give to you. Wait a minute. Why you got to pay for water? In, in, in America right now, there's a place called Flint, Michigan. The water has been diseased with lead in it for two years. You know about that. Why? Do, why? Because we don't have nothing, and we don't want nothing. You got to change your mindset. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. The clothes on your back. Does the tag say made in, uh, 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 made by your own people? Or is it made in Korea? Is it made in Mexico, maybe? Huh? Is it made in India? It's made by, your, uh, by the other nations, man. It's made by your oppressors. Every other nation at one time had your fathers enslaved you, man. Every one of them. One second, bro. One second. And in want of all things. What? And in want of all things. So now, you're in lack of all things. Think about it. What do you get from your own people here in Great Britain? Do you get anything from your own people? Did your people produce anything? Do you, big man right here. Big man on the phone. Do your people produce anything right now? that you could go to the store and get the name produced. What about, you agree? So the, script, the scripture says, we're in want of everything. You understand that? If you want a driver's license, who you go to? If you, got a, if you want a driver's license, to, 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 thank you. If you want to marry your own woman, what you gotta do? If you need, if you need housing from council, where you gotta go? Thank you. So guess what? The scripture's proving who you are. You understand? Because guess what? There's other nations right here in Great Britain with you. But guess what the, the, the Chinese man here in Great Britain could do? He could go back to his own damn land. With his, with, and he could pull out his money with his face on it. The East Indian man could do the same thing. The Jewish man could do the same thing. But we can't do that. We are basically a nation of people at the bottom with another nation over us on the same damn land. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.